My name is Michael Koval Anderson. I'm the CEO of Copenhagen Eyes Design Company. Copenhagen Eyes Design Company is a, a, a planning company. Uh, we advise cities and governments around the world on how to become more bicycle friendly, how to Copenhagenize themselves, uh, which became this, this phrase uh, to describe what we've done in Copenhagen and what is possible in other cities. So, Cities have their game face on now. The bicycle is back as transport. People are trying to figure out how to make a, a shift of people moving around the city over to the bicycle, and um, and we try to help them do that around the world. I mean, we can see from really you know from 2006 until now things are accelerating. There are you know <laughs> cities in the world that didn't even mention the word bicycle in any transport <laughs> discussion in the city. Uh, and now everybody is. Every single city you can imagine is actually, you know, talking about bikes. Maybe they're not doing anything, they don't know how to do it. Other cities are, I call them the zeros to heroes, they're just rocking, uh, rocking it uh, in a short amount of time. Cities like, uh, like Paris, Barcelona, Seville, Dublin, Buenos Aires, I mean, they're, they're taking what we've done over 40 years in Copenhagen and saying, oh, that's possible in five years, boom, and really, you know, laying the baseline down. And uh, this is a... Uh, um, it's a global thing. The bicycle is back as transport for the first time in 60 years around the world, and uh, you know I don't I don't see it going anywhere. I think it's it's really here to stick. We have urbanization, people moving to cities more than ever before, and we 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 know that we need transport solutions to accommodate this rising population. So the bicycle is back to serve our populations in our cities as it was 100 years ago. So it's back to the future. What we see around the world is really uh, um, cities uh, sort of forming into kind of football leagues. You have the, the Premier League, you know, Serie A or, or whatever, and then you have all of the uh, the other leagues, you know, all the way down. Cities are positioning themselves in, in these different leagues. The, the, the zeros to heroes are, 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 are muscling the way right into the, into the Premier League, as it were. Um, then you see all these other cities trying to figure out where they're at. It's not all about putting in 2.5 meters of cycle track on every street in London. I mean, Paris is very similar to London, and Paris is figuring it out. They got like, you know, super slow streets where you can ride your bike, and you got cars behind you. But you know, everybody's moving slow. You know, there's no cycle track on those streets. It's simply thinking differently about the streets. For like 70 years, engineers have been asked one question: How many cars can we fit down a street? Modern cities are asking the new question: You know, how many people can we move down this street using all the transport forms? at our disposal. Trams are coming back. Dallas has a new tram of all places. You know, European cities are putting back in their tram networks and um, you know, making space for bicycles. It's moving people through cities now where for 70 years it was like only cars. So, change the question. And um, cities in China, uh, for example, um, you know, they're, they're, they're Chinese. They're, they're very rational people. So they, they say, right, cars, you know, they, they embrace the automobile over the past 15 years and they're paying the price already and they realize that. So now you see, you know, in what used to be a fantastic bicycle nation, now Shanghai is putting in Copenhagen style cycle tracks. Uh, the city of Guangzhou, you know, a little Chinese city of 5 million people with 20, 20 million in the urban area. Uh, well, let's just build a thousand kilometers of, of, of bike lanes. You know, the Chinese can do that. Uh, dictatorships are handy once in a while, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're rational about it. So, um, you know, China, China is way behind, uh, the, you know, especially Europe, um, but they're realizing it now. And uh, it's going to be a game changer when the Chinese cities really start to, uh, to, to turn back. Uh, the, you know, the clock to, to the bicycle and, um, and, and try to balance their transport equation. So, um, you know, India is even farther behind. They still don't know what they're doing. But really, it's the cities. Somebody's got to do it. And when you have a Paris just, uh, just in the course of 12 years you know, with this amazing mayor they had, uh, Bertrand Delanois, he, you know, he said, no, we're going to make Paris a nicer place to live. We're going to put in infrastructure, bike share, traffic calming, take out some expressways along the river. You know, th there's, there's people who are doing it. And as soon as you have a big city doing it, other cities will follow, right? And uh, it, it's a snowball effect. And um, we're seeing that now. When you, when you look at, 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 at these football leagues emerging, these bicycle urbanism leagues emerging, um, and, and then you think about Australian cities, it's really the bottom tier. It's, uh, um, you know, I always say, my, you know, I speak my mind, but I really mean it when I say Australian cities are farther behind than any other city in the, in the industrialized world. I mean, you know, there's American cities that are ahead, and you, you know if there's American cities who are ahead of you <laughs> regarding bicycles as transport, you suck.
basically you suck really bad. Um, you know, it's it's you go to you go to Adelaide. You know, you meet a mayor who's a planner. He understands it, but he is up against this massive wall of, of engineering culture, traffic engineers who have only been educated to, to serve the automobile, have no interest, no sense of, of, of life in a livable city or what I call the life-size city. Um, you know, baby steps, tiny, tiny little kangaroo hops in Australian cities. And, you know, it's, somebody's got to be left behind in, a, in, in any race. And, uh, and unfortunately, it's Australia. I used to live there. I like, I love, I love the Australian cities, but I mean, in my work, it's like whatever, you know, seriously, there's, there's work to be done and other cities that actually want to do something, that actually see the, the vision of the future in front of them and want to reach out and grab it. Uh, that's, not, that's not Australasia at the moment. So, hey, you know, get your game face on and, you know, catch up. But until then, there's other work to do in, in more interesting places. What, what is coming up for me, which will be very exciting, is, is, is simply a, a television show, probably the, the only... Um, real urbanist television show that's ever been made. Um, traveling around to cities all over the world, um, looking for the life-sized city, looking for, even in a big, horrible, stupid city like Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane, you know, for example, to use the Australian context again, um, you know, there are life-sized elements. There's little pockets of life-sized goodness that make it a nice place. I'm not talking transport, I'm talking about all elements of, of, of modern urbanism. So. It's going to be an exciting TV series called The Life Size City, where uh, where I get to really dig into the in, you know into each city around the world and explore uh, the possibilities. Uh, talk to the the urban heroes, the people who are saying, you know what, I can't wait for City Hall anymore. I'm going to do this. We're going to go out and make a park here because we think there should be one. Uh, we don't have time to wait for planners and and elections. So it's going to be a, a fantastic uh, journey for me, a new chapter in, in my life. Um, you know, bringing my kids with me every other episode, getting the kids' eye view of, of, of the city, of the life-size city. So, um, you know, we, uh, we don't have a premiere date yet, but uh, probably 2016.